my topic for today's discussion is regarding sexual activity in cardiac patients this is a very important a very clinical useful topic wherein we will be discussing whether the patients with recent onset heart attack or heart failure can they be considered fit to perform sexual activities after how much time or how much duration of uh, a heart attack can the patient be considered fit to perform a sexual activity what are the precautions they should be taking what are the reasons why these people deteriorate and do not uh, consider themselves to be fit uh, for sexual activities and why does the sexual life deteriorate after a heart attack and uh, which are the patients and which are the tests which we can perform to confirm the fact whether the patient is physically fit to be sexually active this topic is going to be very useful for all the people who are in the middle and young age or in the 50s and 60s who are still sexually active active and want to continue to be sexually active despite the fact that they have a significant heart problem this topic is going to be very useful for such people coming back to the topic why is this topic important actually the problem in our society especially in the indian society is that it uh, the, there is such amount of social stigma with uh, sexual activity that people fail to discuss it with their friends and relatives people cannot afford to discuss it with their uh, doctors also because so often they feel that they will be laughed upon and they will be made fun of a lot of times these people uh, cannot discuss these activities especially when they have developed so much amount of heart failure or heart attack if they feel that they discuss these uh, about this activity with people <coughs> they, uh, they would become a laughing stock in the town people would make fun about them that is why even if the person does feel the anxiety and does feel the desire to have a sexual activity he will not be able to discuss it with their spouse and you not be able to discuss it with their doctors also the reason being that in lot of healthcare facilities these days in the cardiologist clinics also because of so much amount of rush uh, people fail to get a uh, lot amount of private uh, time with the cardiologist so that they can discuss all these activities in their de- uh, in detail and especially in a society like india a uh, lot of times people because of social stigma fail to discuss these facts especially the people who are not very young who are in the 40s or in the 50s these people because of the social stigma they fail to discuss these problems and beyond the point when they develop a heart problem or heart attack they stop their sexual activity completely and uh, after that they tend to develop much more amount of depression and this becomes a vicious cycle because once the patient is depressed he'll become less sexually active and less uh, sexual activity might promote more amount of depression and anxiety so i think that this topic should be discussed among all cardiac patients especially in those people who uh, are sexually active and want to continue their sexual activity irrespective of the uh, cardiac problem which they are having so uh, i'll be discussing what all the patients where sexual activity can be permitted and where are the patients where it should not be permitted the first and most important point is that if at all a patient can walk two flight of stairs that means uh, maybe around 30 steps if you can climb without significant amount of dyspnea or he can walk on the treadmill for around 5 minutes that is five metabolic equivalents he can walk on the treadmill that is around stage 2 also if he can cover on a treadmill then the person can be considered fit for performing sexual activities because in routine sexual activities especially when you are performing a sexual activity with a uh, with your spouse or in a familiar surroundings heart rate usually exceeds uh, rarely exceeds 130 beats per minute and the blood pressure also rarely exceeds 170 uh, millimeters of mercury so these people uh, can be considered fit to perform activities uh, sexual activities in familiar surroundings if at all they are uh, they can walk two flights of stairs without significant dyspnea and can uh, walk 5 minutes on the treadmill this can be clinically tested and proved in, in a clinical scenario by making the patient walk on a treadmill and seeing whether they can achieve 5 minutes without having significant std changes on an ecg and significant amount of dyspnea and in a home scenario when the patient does not want to go to a clinic to confirm this he can just walk or climb two stairs and confirm this fact for himself uh, studies have shown that people who are uh, have a, a cardiac problem they are slightly more likely to have a heart attack or a cardiac arrest when they are performing a sexual activity that is why patients who are cl- electrically unstable who have a significant amount of chest pain recent heart attack within the next uh, within the last 15 20 days or who have significant heart failure they cannot walk uh, significant amount of distance uh, feel breathless uh, while sleeping also they are breathless these are the patients where in sexual activities ideal should not be permitted and the patient is very likely to have some amount of uh, health hazards when he is performing a sexual activity 
these patients also once they are stable can be permitted to perform this activity but only thing is that in the unstable phase where the patient is electrically and clinically unstable at that point of time we ideally should advise the patient to take extra precautions and maybe uh, restrain themselves from such activities even if they do perform such activities they have to be extra cautious and stop themselves as soon as they start to feel dyspnea and start to develop chest pain uh, if at all uh, patients who are physically active and they are uh, performing day to day physical activities they are much more likely to be uh, fit to perform sexual activities as compared to those who uh, and the incidence of problems and hazards during sexual activity are much more common in sedentary patients as compared to those who are physically active now why is there a worsening of sexual life in a cardiac patient because uh, of course they cannot discuss is then they start to consider themselves unfit because of the health problems because they start to feel dyspneic when doing a sexual activity they tend to uh, consider themselves uh, in uh, uh, unstable or they tend to consider themselves unfit for performing sexual activities and in these patients usually this leads to themselves abstaining from such activities lot of people after uh, heart attack do tend to develop depression also they require some medicines also if they are not treated for their depression the uh, fear of sexual activity can also be increased by this uh, uh, depression uh, sexual dysfunction and erectile dysfunction can also be a part of this depression fear of having a sexual activity is also very high in heart patients uh, in the elderly patients or patients who have a uh, cardiac problem uh, because of their dyspnea they are less likely to develop orgasm so their amount of enjoyment also which they gain during the sexual activity also decreases and drugs like beta blockers which are very commonly used in heart patients sometimes these tend to develop erectile dysfunction also in patients who are susceptible and this also leads to some fear in performing sexual activities is important especially in the indian scenario because indian patients are the, because of the social stigma they do not have these avenues that they can discuss these problems with their doctors and the, with the health care workers and these topics are also not easily available on the internet also so a lot of people tend to keep their feelings beneath, well beneath them uh, their mindset and uh, they tend to forget all their sexual activity and this leads to more and more depression as the uh, vicious cycle of depression and lack of sexual activity persists uh if at all the patient does develop some erectile dysfunction or is unable to perform sexual activities especially if the patient is on beta blocker we ideally uh, reduce the dose of beta blockers drugs like carbidolol are slightly more likely to cause sexual dysfunction we can stop these drugs or change over to bisoprolol or more cardioselective beta blockers where the incidence of sexual dysfunction and erectile dysfunction is less likely we can give the patients to take some uh, nitrates or uh, viagra like medications which is known as uh, sildenafil or tadalafil these medicines can be taken half an hour to 1 hour before the performance of a sexual activity and these leads to a significant improvement in the erectile function of the male patients uh, one thing which these patients should keep keep in mind that if at all they are sexually active and they are taking nitrate they are taking uh, tadalafil and sildenafil these patients should not take nitrates or uh, vasodilators which are they use for a heart attack these medicines within the next 24 hours because sildenafil and tadalafil decrease the uh, reduction uh, or disintegration of nitrates in the body and if at all the patient does take nitrates for a heart problem or some other problem within the next 24 hours very likely that the patient will develop significant drop of blood pressure and might have a, a spell of unconsciousness or a syncopal episode so if at all the patient is having uh, wants to get sexually active and is taking tadalafil and sildenafil he should avoid taking the sublingual nitrates or similar preparations for the next 24 hours otherwise there could be a sudden precipitous decline in the blood pressure levels of these patients frequency of sexual activity there is no significant restriction uh, on multiple days these people can be considered fit to perform sexual activity and uh, uh, if at all they feel uh, that they want uh, to perform it the sexual activity at multiple times a week also they can be considered fit only thing is that uh, the patient should not be electrically or clinically unstable during that point of time uh there is no restriction on how many times per week you can perform it there is no restriction on what duration you can perform a sexual activity if at all the sexual act and the foreplay and everything can continue for one hour or half an hour whatever you want that time you can continue but only thing is that uh, uh if at all the patient does develop some chest pain or does develop some breathlessness or significant amount of cardiac problem is there at that time they should abstain and stop and that time they should take a rest maybe resume their activity after some period of time or consult a doctor if the uh, problem is sudden or abrupt and they feel that some cardiac problem has occurred at that point of time they should discuss with their doctors but otherwise uh, there is no restriction in the duration of sexual activity also only thing is that the vigor with which the sexual activity is being performed that has to be uh, the stamina of the patient has to be taken into account 
if at all the patient is having la- less of stamina during the performance of an sexual activity and he tells to feel dystic also one easy tip is that the patient should daily walk and exercise and perform all sorts of aerobic activities which increases the stamina of the patient and if the stamina of the patient overall increases then also the stamina of the patient during the sexual activity will also be much better and the patient will be much more uh, considered to be much more fit to perform a sexual activity if at all he can walk and run jog, do jogging running swimming these sort of sexual uh, this sort of uh, physical activities if the patient is fit to perform and he has a good stamina in these activities then he can continue to perform sexual activity that will improve his sexual stamina as well uh, if at all the patient is having uh, uh, a fear of sudden cardiac death or is electrically unstable it is very unlikely or very uncommon for the patient to have a sudden cardiac death or sudden cardiac problem during the performance of a sexual activity only in the patients who have electrical instability and who, on the patients who have a very severe heart problem or in acute heart failure phase where uh, they are feeling breathless even with walking a small distance these patients should be considered very high risk to perform a sexual activity for a routine patient where the heart attack has occurred more than 15 days ago and the patient can walk a significant amount of distance there is no breathlessness no chest pain these patients can be considered fit to perform a sexual activity uh activities which involve suffocation or asphyxia during the sexual activity ideally they should be avoided because they can increase the uh, cardiac workload and they can increase the cardiac stress which might lead to some adverse cardiac event but otherwise other forms of sexual activity usually not contraindicated they can uh, engage themselves in multiple sorts of sexual activities only those involving asphyxia and suffocation should be avoided if at all the patient does develop any chest pain or breathlessness he should discuss with the doctors now discussing the uh, sexual life of females who have uh, a cardiac problem or a significant valvular heart disease problem this is very important in india because a lot of young females do have come up to us with heart failure related to rheumatic heart disease and valvular problems and these patients we uh, ha- uh, have a issue of conception also in these patients any patient who is having a significant heart failure where the nyha class is beyond class 2 and the patient is having a significant dyspnea in doing routine activities they should use uh, forms of medical contraception because any conception with uh, in these patients or any pregnancy in these patients should be discussed with the doctors and if at all the patient does become pregnant then the uh, heart problem can uh, worsen also and the patient uh, the uh, health of the baby and the health of the mother both can deteriorate during the course of a pregnancy so if at all a heart patient is perf- uh, planning on a pregnancy a female patient is planning on a pregnancy they should take counseling with the cardiologist and with their gynecologist that whether the they are fit to uh, maintain that pregnancy and whether during the last stages of pregnancy the uh, mother might the health of the mother might deteriorate or not these things should be discussed and kept in mind and if at all these there are significant risk then any form of uh, contraceptive measures can be used ideally we uh, recommend the contraceptive measures like condoms and all where uh, which are known as barrier contraceptives because these are do not have, these do not have significant side effects on the health of either of the partners but the uh, contraceptives involving oral contraceptive pills can be slightly avoided in patients who have a significant heart problems because ocps tend to increase the blood pressures and tend to uh, increase some clotting problems in some patients although the incidence is not very high but still uh, if they at all the, uh, the female patient having a significant cardiovascular problem they should discuss with their doctors whether they are fit to take any oral contraceptive pills or not and as far as possible in cardiac patients pregnancy should be avoided unless the patient is absolutely wants a pregnancy and has been advised by the doctor that they can continue and maintain a pregnancy and the heart failure is only mild or minimal these are the patients where pregnancy can be contemplated and planned but in routine cases uh, it should be discussed with the doctors before any such activity has been uh, planned or any pregnancy is planned in this uh, topic i have tried to discuss uh, what are the issues in performing sexual activities in, in male and female patients especially in the patients with significant amount of heart failure in male patients uh, the golden rule is that if at all the patient is physically fit can walk away in 5 minutes and is not in overt heart failure or not had a very recent heart attack then the patient can be considered fit to perform a sexual activity in female patients uh, they have to be especially careful whether they want to plan a pregnancy or not otherwise they should not be a significant issue unless the patient is in acute heart failure or uh, and is not having a significant amount of angina in post plastic patients uh, with the patients who have undergone a recent stent deployment also they should not worry if they are physically fit and uh, they can uh, be considered fit to perform sexual activities it should not affect the position of the stent or the st- condition of the stent and there will be no increase of risk of stent clotting especially after the first 15 days of an angioplasty so after an angioplasty if uh, 
there is no event for the first 15 days then the patient can be considered fit to perform any sexual activities uh, in this topic i have tried to clear a, a lot of myths and uh, discuss a lot of realities and a lot of facts about the sexual life of uh, the cardiac patients and i have tried to uh, sort out all the problems which uh, creep up into the minds of the patients who are having a cardiac problem and they want to be sexually active but uh, because of social constraints and because of lack of information about the cardiac problems and the fitness issues they tend to abstain themselves from the sex sexual activities and uh, in turn this leads to a lot of increased amount of depression and anxiety in these patients the purpose of my channel is i want to bring to you the scientifically correct and useful information for your benefit so that uh, for these amount of information you need not uh, need to run away for uh, doctors and for uh, healthcare activists and uh, to you need not uh, run to your friends and relatives and to google to give you information if we have a correct information is more likely to happen in our lives so uh, i want to make all the scientifically correct information easily available to you so that you need not uh, have to bother about collecting all the scientifically correct facts uh, in uh, regarding to your disease problems if at all you like the concept of my channel do like my channel subscribe to my channel and if you feel that this content is useful for your friends and relatives you can share the link also with your friends and if at all you feel that uh, uh, mention the link uh, in the comment box below about the these topics so that in future videos we could take up these topics so i am dr navin agrawal and i thank you all for a very patient listening that uh, this topic which was although clinically very useful uh, i have tried to discuss all the theoretical facts also with you so that uh, all the myths and stigmas in your mind tend to get sort sorted out i hope that you have liked this video and it was in some way clinically useful to you uh, the people who are new to my channel i would request you to subscribe to the, my channel it will act as act, uh, act as a motivation for us who uh, if at all the number of subscriptions increase and would also encourage us to bring to you much more of this sort of content which is useful for you as a heart patient and as a health uh, person with a healthcare problem thank you